What I am sitting with so with such a grateful heart is Elder has helped me remember community. When you look at that plant and you see how she grows, she lives in community. Not only as a single plant in the way she comes up with all of her stems and the way that she grows um, to the umbral and the berries and how the flowers and you know that the, the way that they're in community with each other, the way she holds her community in where she grows and lives to each of us in our own community. I feel like she has reminded me of my people. Welcome to the Herbalist Hour. This is where community gather, merging the power of people and the flowers, the sweet and the bitter to the salty, the sour. Oh, mommy, it's time for the Herbalist Hour. Welcome back to the Herbalist Hour. Today I'm incredibly honored and excited to have on Helen Ward. Welcome to the show, Helen. Thank you, Mason. Thank you for having me today. This is going to be great. Um, it's been awesome hanging out with you and your family here in Vermont. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the place where we're at right now? So we are at my home. We're in Waitsfield, Vermont, and we're on the land of the Abenaki, who have been serving and tending this land um, and continue to do so in the state of Vermont. Awesome. Beautiful area. So we're, are we kind of like in the Mad River region? Is that what you call it? We are. Or? So the Mad River Valley, it okay. contains or consists of four different towns. Okay. Um, so Faston, Moortown, Waitsfield, and Warren. Mm. Um, and we have two ski areas, Sugarbush and Mad River Glen. Y'all are big skiers. Um, we are big skiers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, you were, uh, from the airport, you were saying, Mason, enjoy the ride. And I did not know how much I was going to enjoy the ride because, I'm, you know, I'm from Oregon, Western Oregon, where it's heavily wooded, lots of trees, but I was just completely blown away by the beauty of this area. And I can't believe it's taken me this long, damn near 40 years to get to Vermont. To get to Vermont. So, uh, very excited for this trip in general. And, um, yeah, it's been an absolute blast. So. And you came at yeah. the perfect time. You right. know, we have such a short growing season, yeah. but right now everything is bursting. Yeah. And everything's so green, and it's just, it's a beautiful time of year to visit also. So for the listener and viewer, we're here on, what, June 11th, something mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. so, yeah, what a wonderful time. Uh, are you originally from Vermont? I'm not. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in southern Florida. Okay. Um, I, a little different. Yeah. <laughs> I don't love to tell people I'm from Florida. <laughs> You're a Miami honestly. girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, a little north of there, but okay. that's part of the reason why. Sure. Um, when I grew up in Florida, it was definitely a different, uh, a different experience than it is now. I go down now. And that's not to say I feel like this is with judgment, mm -hmm. and I don't necessarily want for you all for sure. who are Floridians. For sure. To their own. Yeah, yeah totally. Absolutely. But um, it's a different place than, you know, I think I've always had the mountain girl in me. Sure. And um, so I lived in Florida until I was in middle school. Okay. And um, uh, my father moved us to upstate New York, about an hour and a half north of New York City. Okay. Um, and I lived in a town called Goshen, New York for middle and high school. And then I moved a little north and went through college. And then I love the mountains. And a group of us moved to Telluride, Colorado. Oh, wow. And we were ski bums uh, for three and a half years. Was the mushroom conference going on at that, at that point? No. Okay. No, yeah. no. But the Bluegrass Festival, it was one of their first when we were there, which the music scene was just incredible. Yeah. Um, and I got into a lot of mischief okay. and a lot of trouble. <laughs> Um, and, and then we all kind of moved back and decided that it was time to start our professional career. So I lived in Boston. Okay. Uh, and I was in all different areas of Boston until I moved a little north to the suburbs. And when we started raising our family, I have two boys, um, we realized that the community there and the people were just, we really wanted a garden. And um, we weren't able to establish on our property a, you know, a really good garden. We didn't have good sun, all the things. And um, so we moved to Vermont. Okay. And we've been living here. I've been here for 15 years now. Waitsfield specifically? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. So we rented for a while and then we ended up very fortunate um, with the place that we have now. Okay. Yeah. So we were hanging around a little bit in the Burlington area. And as I was telling you and Amanda, I was like, oh, this kind of reminds me of my hometown, Eugene, Oregon. It's got a little bit of hippie flair, at least from what I saw. Um, uh, it felt right at home. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I, I'm guessing that that kind of goes along with like a strong herbal scene in this area. So I think of like um, herbal 
strong herbal scenes, I think of Eugene, Oregon, Asheville, North Carolina, and then I always, Vermont's always in there as mm -hmm. well. And I'm just kind of curious, why do you think there's such a strong herbal community in the Vermont region? So one big reason, so there's a couple. Yeah. One is they are called the Green Mountains. That's what we saw that on the license plate, <laughs> Green Mountain State. Green Mountain State. Yeah. So it's like there are green people here, yeah, right? Totally. I mean, really, Even and I think- uh, oh, yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. So I, one of the things that I really feel, and you heard a touch of it from my son last night, but when we moved here, the movement of local food and eat local, but also kind of walk, ride, bike to work. Your son started it yeah. all. <laughs> In his mind. <laughs> At the right age of 10. Yes. Yeah, so, um, yeah. So that's a really fun story. So, um, so for those of you who are listening, it's really, he is a sweet boy. Yeah. And when we moved here, um, he started walking to, to school. In and the we, snow. It, it, every day of his entire elementary school experience, yeah. he had a sprained ankle. He biked one day, you know. Um, he did not want to give up that goal. And it was really, he ended up having people who joined him. I mean, rain, shines, you know, all of it. It was like we'd get up at five in the morning and walk with him. <laughs> Back to your question of yeah. how many herbalists there are, I really believe that we are drawn to this state and to these communities because equally, you know, not, well, each of us as individuals is what I meant to say. Yeah. We love the land yeah. and we have a deep respect and relationship, I feel like with, you know, whether you're an herbalist or not, you know, there's foragers and farmers and gardeners and, and medicinal plant lovers yeah. and herbalists. So I think that that movement of eat local, yeah. you know, has really um, been ingrained with us. Yeah. And I think that it, it also helped, in my humble opinion of Rosemary, that she moved here and started Sage Mountain mm. Botanical Sanctuary in a way that, you know, then there was access to, and there are many teachers, right? right. But we know how inspiring she is. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> she started um, a lot of things. She did. Yeah. And so then there was that accessibility, which is part of her mission statement yeah. of, you know, so I think that that also then spawned many teachers who now are teachers mm -hmm. in our Vermont communities you know, who might have already been studying with the plants, but then went to study with her also in more of a, you know, whatever setting they were striving for and looking yeah. for. So I yeah. think it's a combination of where we live. I think it's the movement of kind of eat local. And I think it's the mindset of who's attracted here. Totally. You know, and then we're with our people. Yeah. Right. I bet you even just your your typical eat local type of person, gardener, almost fancies themselves quasi an herbalist anyways, because they're probably using yarrow or plantain. They're like, oh, I'm not an herbalist, but they're, it's, it's just part of their daily lifestyle. And as we know, food yeah. is medicine. Right, exactly. Right? So, yeah. you know, I was just reading an article which was fascinating the other day, and it's something we all know, but I was reminded of, yeah. is when you go, even if it's an organic bunch of kale at the grocery store, yeah. how much they've, they've been doing studies with how the... Um, the vitamins and the mineral content, right? Mm -hmm. The vibrancy of yeah. the plants, even if it's organic and it's that travel, you know, and the loss of all of that. So I think, you know, eating wild, yeah. it, it creates this, the wild spirit, sure, right? Absolutely. So walking outside your door. Yeah. I was a part of, it brings to mind Jody Noe, mm -hmm. who is the herbalist in Rhode Island. And I believe she's Cherokee and I apologize that I don't know that but honoring her native indigenous um, background. And, and she, we did a, um, a couple years ago, we created a sacred, side, uh, sacred seed society. Mm. And the idea behind it was really encouraging people to understand and build that relationship no matter where you were in the world. You know, so if you were in the city finding a weed that was growing on your doorstep, yeah. you know, and honoring it and nurturing it, planting a seed on your back porch mm -hmm. or, you know, if it was a container or, but she came up with this hashtag of the store outside your door. That's cool. And I've like always loved that. Yeah. She, it actually, I don't know that it ever got wheels. Okay. I always sure. have wanted to give it wheels yeah. because I just think like with bioregional and, you know, as we'll get to that, but as a part of Rosemary School and Science and Art of Herbalism, yeah. we encourage everybody you know, create your own Materia Medica mm. list, right? We will give you the, the foundations of the different classes of herbs. Yeah. But really, go outside your door. The plants are there for us. Yeah. And it gives me chills, 
You know, we don't need to be shipping them all over the world. So it's hashtag the store outside your door. Yes. Love it. Let's let's get some traction for that yes. hashtag. Yes. Isn't that all awesome? Over the socials. Yeah. Yes. And you mentioned the science and art of herbalism with Rosemary. You've been with that company for 15 years. But before we get into that, I do yes. want to delve a little more into your background. Um, you mentioned your kiddo. And he's a rad dude. <laughs> and you mentioned also previous, you were a little bit of a mischief maker in your youth. But let's take it a little bit before that. What were you like in your younger years? And then kind of take us through the journey of discovering herbalism in the plant path. So as a young child in Florida, yeah. um, in the era, so I was always the earth loving, dirty <laughs> Um, I sent you a picture because I thought That's it right, captured yeah. me. Watch that right here. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the in the sand, I was the one that never had a top on. Mm -hmm. You know, I really I was like that little. I think I was um, always just digging in the dirt outside. I loved nature, you yeah. know, in whatever way, shape, or form, and so that's been with me uh, since I was born mm. in many lifetimes, I believe. But. Yeah. Um, as a young one, I was, I was feisty. Yeah. I, see that. <laughs> I was a spirited <laughs> little one. Um, and I think, you know, there was also um, a lot that happened in my life. My mother passed when I was very young and uh, my father raised my sister and I, my sister is seven years older than I am. Mm. And so I also, we had a lot of people coming and going from my home and uh, I think that just in my upbringing, I feel like it kind of formed me into being able to work with and know many different kinds of people. Mm -hmm. um, I think as I continue to grow, I've always loved nature. I've been a skier my whole life, and I have conflict with that now personally just because of climate change and the, the amount of energy we use to create that experience and sport. So I, I struggle with that right now because it also gets me in the beautiful mountains. But I've skied my entire life. I was, was your dad a skier? He was. Okay. Yeah. So after my mother passed, he really didn't feel joyful in our home for holidays. Mm. So he created a business in Colorado and would fly us out there wow. on as work. Okay, yeah, right enough. <laughs> totally. <Why not? laughs> and so, you know, we were the Florida girls, their family, and he would bring all our friends, and we would just go out there for holidays, and that's how I learned when I was really young. Um, and I love being in the mountains. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing like, for me, being that free, and it's a confidence that I've had my whole life, yeah. you know. And the mountains have taught me, and skiing has taught me many lessons that we can, you know, discuss later, but... It's really interesting. Yeah, there was yeah. one time, after a really hard few years, I wasn't doing a lot of self-care. Yeah. And I went up grumpy one day. It was just three years ago now. Uh, or two years ago, I went up, I was grumpy as all get out, which I'm not typically grumpy, right? right? Yeah. And I we all kept, have our moments. Right, but I kept <laughs> sitting with that, and I thought, yeah. look at this. Yeah. Like, I'm with my, my boys were there, yeah. Peter was there. I, I was like, this is insane, Helen. It's a gorgeous day, yeah. and I literally was trying to shake it, and um, if, you're, if you're a skier, you know, like, or an ice, you know, ice skater or whatever, where you can do a quick stop mm -hmm. and the snow will spray. Yeah. So I was trying to be playful and like shake it off, right? Mm -hmm. And I, I did this and I had a new pair of skis on, which I hadn't had in a long time. And I did this quick move to spray Peter and kind of be a jokester, <laughs> right? It, that mountain and those skis and whatever spirit in that moment, or it was an accident, who knows, it flipped me on my ass. <laughs> like literally, I mean, I, I did this, this move that I, I mean, Peter Great just shit. looked at me. It was almost like it was slow motion and I smacked my hip. I ended up with a bone bruise and I oh, couldn't man. walk for four months. Oh, that's not funny. Why it am just, I laughing? No, but it's okay. But my point is now that I look back, it was like, was the universe telling me to slow down? Yeah. You know, that I needed to do mm -hmm. inner work, that yeah. I needed to actually grieve what had happened to us, yeah. you know, right. in what we had experienced over that time. So anyway, uh, skiing has been a big part of my life. And I think um, I've always been an adventurer yeah. from the day that I was born. I think I love a good adventure, whether it's a hike that I don't know where the trail is or um, I used to take my kids when after they were born, we had this really fun thing where we would get in the car and I would literally say to them, tell me where to drive. And they would take turns saying left or right. That's cool. And I we would that. get completely yeah. lost and we would have so much fun. Yeah. 
And this was the day, you know, these were in the days, like, we had phones, but everyone wasn't on Google Maps. Yeah. Like, you know, and we would find these amazing places. Yeah. And then at the end, and this was when groceries weren't as expensive either, yeah. I would give them each, I think it was $5, yeah. and we would each take $5 into the grocery store. Yeah. And you had to hide what you were going to buy to contribute to make the meal. But the rules were That's it so couldn't fun. be just yeah. crap, like because right. we it's didn't not like eat marshmallows and right, yeah, you know, so it has to be a cohesive meal, like an actual dinner or something. Right, yeah. and it was fascinating because, yeah. like, you know, my youngest is—they're both we're all meat eaters, yeah, yeah, you know. Totally. But like, he really appreciates meat, so yeah. he would always go to the meat section. Yeah. But you know, so anyway, and then we'd bring it home in our yeah. secret little bags, yeah. and we'd lay it out on the counter, and we'd figure out what we were going to make. That's cool. Just a quick break from the show to thank our presenting sponsor, Oshala Farm. Oshala Farm is a beautiful and vibrant certified organic herb farm based in Southern Oregon, where they grow and sell over 80 different plant species. The founders, Elise and Jeff Higley, have been longtime friends, so I highly trust their growing methods and ethics. You'll love the potency and vibrancy of all the herbs they have to offer. To learn more and purchase their herbs and other organic goods, head to oshalafarm.com. So thanks once again to Ashala Farm for sponsoring the Herbalist Hour. Now back to the show. Enjoy. Would you look for like a recipe or would you just freestyle it? What you had there? We would freestyle That's it. So cool. The three of us. Yeah, that. or the four of us. But yeah. so, you know, those experiences I think bring that adventure and that spirit mm. of, you know, togetherness and memories. I've always wanted to do that thing where you just go to the airport and you buy whatever tickets next oh. or something like that. I, just go to like, you know, some random state or city or whatever. Mm -hmm. and, it that's a like good that. one. Yeah, yeah that's a really good one. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think that's the, the, as far as young Helen, I yeah. think I was, uh, I was all the things. So the skiing got you out in nature, your appreciation of the woods. Um, is that kind of what led you then to discovering the, the healing powers of plants or? I think I've always loved being with the plants, mm. but until I was a young mother, yeah. I think that's oh, yeah. really what set me on the path. Yeah. So um, both of my children, um, like many, have our things. Yeah. Um, and what really struck me was when we lived in Boston, I, my, I was a young mother with both of my boys and we went um, to Children's Hospital. Okay. And my youngest son has severe allergies, asthma, yeah. eczema. Yeah. And we would leave Children's Hospital and I would both be in awe at how blessed I was with even though I had a child that had, you know, these severe health issues yeah. to see the others in the hospital that were dealing with bigger things than I was, yeah. was always a humbling experience for me mm -hmm. of gratitude. Um, I also couldn't believe how many prescriptions I would walk out of the hospital with every single time we would see an allergist or a, you know wh whoever we were seeing it it blew me away and i knew that there in just to my core that there was a different way and i also knew before i was like officially a student of herbalism and started studying in um, classes but as i was self-taught i knew that it was a band-aid approach mm -hmm. you know that there was something there that was um, that was just a knowing. So I started to self-teach myself. And I think you and I have been talking, um, actually the three of us, yeah. Amanda as well, have been speaking about food as medicine. Mm -hmm. And I've never been a fabulous cook, mm -hmm. I, really. Like, um, but I can always hold my own. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I love to shop with good, like I yeah. love to buy good food. Totally. And really, if you start with wholesome wonderful food. Yeah. So that's when we lived in Massachusetts and we moved out of, I mean, in the North End, I, when I lived in the North End, you could, I, I loved it. I would stroll through the North End and you can go to all the different stores and markets and, you know, get really wonderful food. And then we moved to Northern Massachusetts. There was a, one of the first farmer's markets mm. and I ended up very, um, I felt very blessed because you couldn't get a share. And I ended up with a friend's half share. And then I ended up with a share. But you would go to this barn that was like this just gigantic old barn mm -hmm. on the, one of the oldest farms that had been preserved in northern, you know, up, up north of Boston. And I received this farm share. And it, that was inspiring That's because, cool. you, you know, I, things that, I, first of all, I couldn't grow on the land, which is why we ended up moving to Vermont. But also just to 
have things like kohlrabi. I didn't know what kohlrabi was. How do you cook it? How do you, you know, it, all the things. So that was, it was so the, fresh tasting, vibrant, oh, the colors oh are my gosh. beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I have, um, which just brought me and I just need to share with you because yeah. I haven't yet, but my father was from Oregon. Oh. So I have roots and memories of growing mm. up, traveling to Oregon to spend oh. time with my what grandparents. Uh, Portland. Okay. Sure. And then yeah. Salem. Yep, been there. Um, and so my <laughs> grandfather was a big gardener. Yeah. And wow. he had the terraced gardens. Mm -hmm. And I will never forget the first carrot I ever tasted. Was in he, Portland, Oregon? It, and it, right. he literally pulled it out of the ground, <laughs> gave it a whack, and yeah. handed it to me, dirt and all. And yeah. I just was in, oh Ooh, my, I will I never right forget now. that yeah. that experience. It was a very special experience. That's awesome. Yeah. When did you start studying, say, because I want to say you most likely studied with Rosemary. I did. <laughs> Um, was she your first, like, say, herbal mentor, or um, did you have other teachers, or was it kind of just rosemary all the way? So when we moved to Vermont, yeah. um, we rented a place for about a year okay. and um, in Waitsfield, mm -hmm. and we were looking for property, and I, this, first of all, it was what we could afford. Yep. Um, we were very blessed at the time. The market was dipping, and we ended up buying this beautiful farm. The family had been here for 65 years, and they had never put any inputs on it. Um, old buildings, you know, all the things that I wasn't personally interested in, but the land absolutely wrapped itself around me. Yeah. So one day, I was, we were looking to see um, kind of what our next journey was. Like all of us, we had a story. Sure. Um, my husband had been laid off from the tech industry at the mm -hmm. time, uh, my first husband, yeah. the boy's father. And we were down at the river. And there was this young guy, red hair, and he had gone to school in Ashland, mm. uh, North Carolina. Oregon? No. Oh, Asheville. North Asheville, Carolina. North yep. Carolina. Totally. And we started talking, and he was, um, you know, I was a woman of the plants, yeah. but not necessarily uh, professionally or taught as an herbalist. Sure. I just knew, you know. And so we were talking about the farm and we knew that we wanted to grow medicinals. And I knew that elder, before I knew elder, yeah, yeah. I knew that elder was a plant that we wanted to grow. And I started talking to him and he was so excited. And his name was Connor. And he came and we, he built a slack line for the boys. Oh, and fun. like, you know, he just, he had this vibrant young energy. He loved working with the plants. He loved the medicinals. Um, he's a physician now, mm. uh, an osteopath, actually, oh. I believe. But um, he was the one. He said, do you know Rosemary Gladstar? And I said, no. And next thing I know, he had gone online. He had printed out some things. And we're about an hour from Sage Mountain. Mm. And he said, you have to go. You have to go. <laughs> and I just remember I was so, I'd never done anything like that. You know, like I didn't know where I was going. I'm an adventurer, yeah, right? right? But there's a difference for me of adventuring in nature with my people right. or with myself, right? Yeah. Versus showing up to something that I was like, I'm going to camp by myself on this mountaintop. Mm. <laughs> Right. learn about the plants like it was, was this like an apprenticeship thing you were signing up for I signed up yeah. for one for like workshop, just a weekend or, workshop yeah, yeah. and so I drove stay over and everything yeah, yeah. Okay. so I dove in I went by myself yeah. and I just thought okay here I go yeah. you know and I cannot okay I know you know this feeling or I know many of you probably know this feeling where you show Goosebumps up already <laughs> you show up to wherever it is yeah. that in whomever teacher it is yeah. in whatever sacred space it's on yeah. and the land that's been cared for. I mean, it just, it's through my body. Yeah. So there's Rosemary and there's many others. Yeah. I mean, I, I have, I am biased. You yeah. know that about her. Rosemary's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> right. My point is though, is that there's many sanctuaries <laughs> that have been created, right? This was yeah. just the place that I was totally. called to in yes. that moment. And I felt like I was home. Mm. I just started crying and I thought, I don't want to leave. And that summer I took every offering she had. That's cool. Literally, I yeah. signed up for, I went to that one, and then I just was like, I, I just kept, I needed more and more and more. And the thing that I love about Rosemary, and we can talk about it, about the science and art of herbalism yeah. also, but she is such a believer in having many teachers. Yeah. 
And so not only was I learning from her, and I was learning from the plants of Sage Mountain and the people that were coming, but I was learning from all these amazing teachers that she brought, David Winston and Margie Flint and Guido. Wow. You know, and it was like, I just, it, I couldn't get enough of all of them. Yeah. It was such a moment for me. They're all different pieces of the puzzle. They all have their different take on the plants, different relationships, mm -hmm. different stories, and I, I could not agree more. I love that she emphasizes learning from so many different teachers. Mm -hmm. That's that's one of uh, Herb Rally's missions is to do that. So that first time that you went to Sage Mountain, I'm just trying to place it years-wise. Was that about 20 years ago or so? No, or? it was 15 years okay, ago. Okay, so 15 years ago. That's yes. when you started your journey at with Rosemary. Yes. Okay. When did you get to start working there? So when I started going to Sage Mountain, as you can, as you know, yeah. from being in events and classes <laughs> and Rosemary, yep. how amazing yep. she is and how many lives she's touched, yeah. really. The gratitude, having been now with her for so long and walking with her next to her, or I know many have this experience, where people will come up and want to thank her mm -hmm. for the difference that they've made or the impact, right? So here I am at Sage Mountain, and I kept finding myself with her alone in her apothecary. Mm. It happened like two or three times. Mm. And I thought, this is interesting. Yeah. You know, so at one point I thought, this is such a long shot, shot in the dark, and how many people, I right. mean this from the bottom of my heart, say to her, do you need help? Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought, just go for it. Yeah. Just be brave and, you know, say it, you mm -hmm. know. So, um so I did, and I offered, and she gave me that look mm -hmm. that was like, oh, thank you, honey. And I'm thinking, no, no way in hell am I going to have a job, right? Like, really, but I was like, good for me, I did it, yeah. you know. So I came no home. Regrets. No regrets. Yeah. No regrets. Yeah. So I came home, and I, w I needed work. And I knew the gentleman who ran the um, insurance company downtown. Mm -hmm. And as I've been a professional my entire career. Yeah. So um, event planning, I ran sales and customer service for a company in Boston. Like, you know, so oh, yeah. I had good experience. Sure. And I was looking for mom hours and insurance. <laughs> yeah. So I go down to him and I interview. And he's a friend of mine. And he looks at me and he says, I don't mean this disrespectfully. You are going to be so bored here. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like you're going to know what you're doing in a few weeks. And like, really, this yeah. is what you, you know. And I really, I appreciated his questioning. And I came back and I'm a huge letter writer. Mm -hmm. And so I sat down and I wrote Rosemary a letter and I thanked her. And I said, and I really just wanted to reiterate that if you ever needed help, mm -hmm. that I'm here. And I gave her my contact information, and she had my address, yeah. you know, on the envelope. And about a week later, I think I either fainted, peed in my pants, <laughs> like, I'm not both, sure which, both, yeah. all of it. I received a letter back from her yeah. saying, um, my son Jason, who I'd like to honor, yeah. um, uh, and I are putting the online course, or her course online, excuse me, um, and uh, we'd love for you to help. And so that's where it started. So Jason, Rosemary's son, uh, it was what you were saying before uh, when we were chatting earlier, it was one of his visions to take a lot of Rosemary's work and put it online. Mm -hmm. so, so how has that kind of, how did that all begin working with Jason um, and how did it kind of evolve to this day? And, yeah, just take us through that journey. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So um, Jason was passionate about Rosemary and her teachings. And um, to honor him in his vision. And I was hired uh, to basically take the science and art of herbalism, which is a printed version of the course, and put it as an online offering. So in the beginning, he was the tech kind of website wizard. Yeah. And I was more of a student perspective. So I was hired as the educational director. Oh. And my role was to really help create this presence in the online community so that we could, you know, really have Rosemary's teachings reach farther. And as time went on, um, the basically the roles of, you can imagine, you know, like any small business. Um, and it's where I thrive. I really love to be, and I think Jason did as well. Uh, for a long time, it was just the two of us, and we basically wore many hats. Mm -hmm. You know, so we were um, working with Rosemary as kind of inspiration for her and visionaries, if you will, of what this platform could be. Um, I will say Jason was a man of the earth mm -hmm. and of her teachings, and I miss him every day. Um, 
And as time has gone on, um, my roles and responsibilities have, have grown, if you will. So now I, I, I really don't like the word direct or manage, right. personally. I feel like it's not um, inclusive of our team or the work that we do. Right. So uh, I work closely with our entire team. Okay. So every day or week, um, I work with Rosemary on, you know, kind of the the day-to-day -day things. So over time, she has really, I'm so grateful because I would go to Sage Mountain before she moved from Sage Mountain, and now Emily Ruff is the right. steward of that land. Um, I would literally go with my computer and sit with Rosemary and make sure that I was honoring and representing her, the spirit of her teachings and the style of her work mm -hmm. in every aspect that we were offering to students, to marketing, um, you know, when I first started, uh, Jason and I unpacked, I think there were six different social media accounts that had been started by interns. Right. <laughs> and so we kind of wrangled them all in. And, yeah. you know, for, for a long time, I was kind of wearing all of those hats. Mm -hmm. I was student support. I was marketing. Um, I would work with Jason for new content on the site, you know, as we've spoken about Rosemary and how many teachers we, you know, so we have a whole guest teacher section. Yeah. Um, so I would work with those teachers to put these mini offerings on the site. Mm -hmm. And now as, as kind of time has gone on, I think my, my big role is to make sure that I work closely with Rosemary every day or every week or you know, depending on schedules right. and, and all of the things yeah. to make sure that we're implementing our plans and kind of vision, yeah. whatever new offerings we have or initiatives that we're putting forth. Mm -hmm. And so I work closely with our team. So we have a full-time uh, marketing director and technology person, Emma Groff. Shout who, out, Emma. Uh, yep. Mm -hmm. uh, and she has been, um, she, she came to us after a, a very hard time and really stepped in and helped us with heart and authenticity. Uh, Mary, who I've been working with, she worked at Sage Mountain. So Mary McCarthy has been with, we have been working together for more than a decade. And she is my rock, uh, really. She holds our students like I, I can't even tell you. Um, and we have 13 course teachers right now around the world. So my role really is to oversee and work with each of them to make sure I take it um, to heart that I feel strongly that my role is to make sure that they have everything that they need in the spirit of Rosemary's teachings to do their work as well as they can. What's a course teacher? Is that someone who's taking uh, everything that's inside of the science and art of herbalism and then teaching it? Rosemary's philosophy on herbalism to their community or what? what, what so the science that? and art of herbalism is yeah. a 10 lesson course okay. and each lesson goes through, it's a very in-depth dive into the foundations of herbalism yeah. from Rosemary's perspective. Yeah. So the way Rosemary designed the course is at the end of each lesson, so you learn not only the body systems, the plants that go with that particular body system, and um, also different aspects of herbalism, yeah. so infusions, decoctions, right? At the end of each lesson, there's a series of hand on, hands-on assignments mm -hmm. and questions from the actual coursework, from Rosemary's teachings. Okay. So we have a team of teachers, the students then go through that process, they go through the lesson, they review it, they read it, they do the work, they answer their questions, and then they submit their homework, is kind of an old school word, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, but they submit it to us. Yeah. And we have a team of teachers who have been hand selected and trained by Rosemary and I. Hmm. And then we basically, every student receives personal feedback from one of these course teachers. Got it. That's so it's amazing. very in person. Yeah. Um, it we do not grade the lessons. Yeah. So there's no grading, but we offer deep guidance yeah. to every one of our students. Okay. So the lessons are submitted either through our online platform, mm -hmm. through email or old school. Mm -hmm. Many students send their homeworks in handwritten. <laughs> to it this is day? unbelievable. That's cute. <laughs> the 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 drawings. Oh, yeah. I mean, and we've just gone through this whole testimonial project mm -hmm. that we're doing for our site and launching. And one of the things that Rosemary's, our entire company, and based on her and how she's built our team, is affordability and accessibility. Yeah. And that looks and feels in many ways, shapes, and forms, yeah. right? So um, our course is inexpensive, as inexpensive as we are able to with right. a very low profit margin, right. Right. Um, and accessibility. 
So we have different versions of the course, but one of our students who lives off grid, you know, who is not connected at all to the internet or computers or anything, right. basically just wrote to me and said, thank, tell Rosemary thank you, because you can receive the printed binder and you can have the same teachings and you can mail your homework in and have these teachers review. Yeah. It's a, you know, it's a very special, I feel blessed every day that we created this container for our students where in the spirit of, um, so there's many teachers yeah. that are amazing and many herbalists online, in person, you know, so we all have our thing, mm -hmm. right? And of course we can deeply talk about Rosemary and her gifts yeah. all day long and how she empowers us and encourages us with relationships. Um, and she has created this container for her students where they're, you know, they can be vulnerable. They can submit these lessons to our team and receive these, the feedback and the guidance. Yeah. You know, we were talking last night about how many students who come to herbalism, not everybody, right? So there is a subset of people who have not been served by the medical, mm -hmm. you know, or our healthcare system. Um, my personal belief is that there's balance in all things. So having a son who's anaphylactic, right. I am grateful for epinephrine every day Amen. and an inhaler. I mean yeah. that. Yeah. Like I, you know, and I think that's, that's our entire school in the container that we've created is balance. Yeah. So there's no judgment. Yeah. You know, so these students can, can come to us and they can learn yeah. with, the, with the boundaries and the container of, and then our teachers, like we just did a Zoom with all of us yeah. right before you arrived, before you and oh. Amanda arrived. And I, I took some pictures, but the, each of them come from different backgrounds. They have different um, passions in the herbal field, aromatherapists. You know, we have a woman from Texas who's Cherokee, mm. and she's her clan mother. Mm. Um, we have a, a nurse herbalist who she was a flight medic and ER nurse for 30 years. Wow. Now she's a nurse herbalist. So she really can speak to those medical people that come to us yes. or the healthcare professionals who need all the things that they come to herbalism for. Yeah. She can speak that language and teach them. Um, so I think overall, I'm, I help hold the container in the way that Rosemary designed the course and the spirit. And I really, um, I pinch myself every day. <laughs> I feel blessed and honored and, it, and I have, I know I'm privileged yeah. in this place yeah. and I really um, hope and work to uh, never ever ever feel that it is it's a gift well just knowing you for over a decade you know we've had lots of emails mm -hmm. back and forth over the years previous job with mountain reserves and then through herb rally and stuff like that i thought you've always held it down really well thank you is rosemary you think you're, you're doing a good job i think so okay. <laughs> <laughs> i hope so <laughs> i think you are i Ellen. think she yeah thank just you. to underscore a couple of the different points um first of all price you, you talked about the affordability of it. Uh, you still got to pay the bills and, you know, pay your staff and all this other stuff. I think it's incredibly fair. I remember when y'all uh, gave us access to the course behind the scenes. I'm like, holy shit, you get this much stuff for this price? It's it's quite robust. Like, there's so many different lessons in there. I just, um, yeah, I'm excited to delve more into it. By the way, let's drop the website. Is it scienceandartofherbalism.com? It is. Okay. Yes. Sweet. We'll yeah, leave that in the, of course, yeah, the podcast uh, show notes. YouTube description, all the above. So I just wanted to highlight that. Um, and if yeah, I please. may, I think yeah. one of the challenges, and thank you for that, yeah. one of the challenges that we have in the, this world of marketing, yeah. right, is that um, people often compare, and, and so it's a couple things. One is, and we've talked about holding the herbal community without the word competition. Uh -huh. And we could, I, I am thankfully and... I, there's so much that we can talk about with that whole thing, right? How we as an herbal community can lift each other up yeah. and have reciprocity and not have competition, but have collaboration, mm -hmm. right? Which is yeah. the goal of our organization. And we all know Rosemary yeah. is the most generous being I think I've ever met. And, but what happens sometimes for us is how do we market in the spirit of collaboration? Yeah because we all have to pay the bills yeah. <laughs> and we honor and know that that is a thing. Yeah. And while also, you know, having our course be so little, people often look at it and think it's not as worthy. That's interesting. Right? Yeah. It's a really interesting- You get what you pay for. Kind of, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like, but 
anyway, yeah, I just wanted to name that because totally. it's a challenge because there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, and honoring how many other amazing herbalists are out there and yeah. the product they're putting out, right. or the teachings they're putting out there yeah. and the offerings, and that it is expensive. Yeah. You know, we'll have students, even with what we charge, sometimes, yeah. you know, aren't able to afford it. Absolutely. Right? Yeah, you affordable know? is in quotation marks right. because it just depends on who's saying the word, mm -hmm. you know what mm -hmm. I mean? So, um, comparatively though, yeah, to a lot of other programs out there, but that's the other thing that I wanted to highlight was, um, also, like yesterday when we were all kicking it and talking, you were saying people will take this course who are experienced herbalists, mm -hmm. beginner herbalists, people who haven't taken a class in a while. They want, they've want they studied with lots of people, but they've never studied with Rosemary. So, like, there's so many different reasons to support Rosemary and y'all's work, um, and then along with all the other herbalists. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to highlight that, that all sorts of different herbalists on different journeys are taking the class. And it's so fun for us yeah. because the really neat thing about the container in the online platform and, you know, as our community yeah. is that I think that, especially in the forums, yeah. the students totally. are learning from each other, yeah. you know, and nice. from our teachers, right? Yeah. So it's really, um, it's inspiring. And I think it also is wonderful for our course teachers yeah. because they then are kind of, seeing how maybe an established, esteemed herbalist might have, like I know, for, and I'm not putting myself in that category, but I know recently I kind of lost my way with making herbal medicine. Totally. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's like <laughs> it became a bit of a chore because yeah. people, and I don't mean that, but like well, I think we all... you probably get gifted with stuff all the time. And, I don't know. It <laughs> like just like I wasn't inspired yeah, in this totally. moment, right? Yeah. So I started making candles yeah. because I right, thought, right. okay, I can make, you know, it's like a salve, you yeah. know, and I can put my love and yeah. flair into it and yeah. it's a little bit something different but it's still handmade and of yeah. the earth and all these things. Yeah. But so recently a, an established herbalist went through the course and I had a lovely conversation and I said, you just finished? Yeah. Like you finished <laughs> the course? I said, tell me more, yeah. you know? And she said, I needed to be re-inspired. Yeah. You know, I, I kind of lost my passion yeah. and I, who else would I go to than Rosemary? You know, so, Absolutely. and there's many teachers, yeah. but Rosemary is... Many features inside who, who, of the no the, oh, right. the, in yeah. the, in our herbal community. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm very mindful of that because yeah. I think that there are, especially now, like our mission for the school and Rosemary's mission has always been to have an herbalist in every home, yeah. on every corner, in every community. Yeah. And we're getting there. Yeah. How oh, exciting yeah. is that? Yeah. It's a time of you know, and then and then that's part of the let's all work together. Yeah. You know, and yeah. support each other. Yes. So if I can, I have one Please. story about that, but, yeah, then I'll, I, but I get excited <laughs> about when I first moved here, um, uh, I went, I was, I, so we had started, I, I was so excited. I'd been studying with Rosemary and I was, I, my girlfriends t were teasing me because they said that they were going to make a bumper sticker that said, I've got a salve for that. Because <laughs> <laughs> every time yeah. anybody yeah. asked me anything, yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Debbie, you, you know, if you work with chamomile, did you know this? Do you know that? Anyway, so I had like, you name it, I'd go to the farmer's market and had like a hundred different products and yeah. people would be like, you know. Yeah. So I dialed it back and I did some research in the community and I basically, like many, right? Yeah. I think every community, people struggle with sleep, yeah. digestion issues. So I made a bitters blend. Yeah. I had a sleep remedy. Yeah. I had the immune tonic, which was elder, yeah. my, you know, an ally of mine. Um, Tulsi for stress and anxiety. You know, I had a couple is, of like, I dialed it back. I made a tea from the land that I called the welcome tea. Mm. And so I always served that at the farmer's market. But um, so I wanted to do the spare. This, it was like a, a holiday fair. Mm. And I called the woman who was organizing it and I said, I'd love to get a booth. And she said, well, I'm sorry, we already have an herbalist. Oh. And I was like, that's right? interesting. <laughs> right? And I said, oh, okay. Yeah. And I hung up and I thought, really? Yeah. Like, that's how this rolls? Yeah. And I was like, no way. So I, I called her back mm. and I said, well, who's the herbalist? And she said, it's this woman, Heidi. So I said, thank you. Yeah. So I called Heidi. <laughs> and you I, know was, Heidi. I didn't know oh, her. You didn't know her. I okay. had no idea who she was. Yeah. And I said, Heidi, I just moved here and I'm an herbalist. Yeah. And I kind of explained my story a little. And I said, you know, would you have a cup of tea with me? Yeah. And so we sat down and we ended up booths right next to each other. That's cool. Supporting each other. Because mm. what she did was totally different than what yeah. I did. And I cannot encourage us more. Where we are is in divisiveness as a human mm -hmm. race in this moment. We all need to be working with each other. So, Cooperation versus competition. Oh, yeah. 
And so, yeah, thank I, you for listening. And I, I know that. it was toting me so a little, good. and that wasn't my point. But I think really, like that story was so. If we can challenge yeah. ourselves yeah. to really be working yeah. with each other right now yeah. and with the plants, and really not looking at it from that other mindset of competition, yeah. I think it's really important. And Rosemary is a star when it comes to that. She like is. She's, she's very, mm -hmm. actually when I interviewed her at the Great Lakes Herb Fair, I started the interview with that because mm -hmm. Jim was on stage talking about how good she is about, you know, approaching that cooperation versus competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah, is there anything else that you want to talk about, cover uh, in the science, of our, science and art of herbalism uh, before we kind of move on? I think the only thing that I would really like to, for me, I think when we had this teacher Zoom the other night, you know, I, we know this, but one of our course teachers said it so beautifully that I'd like to share it. Please. Rosemary teaches about herbalism mm -hmm. and the plants, but really what I think, and I could talk, we could have this whole conversation, me loving on her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think many of us could, right? Sure. <laughs> and, and how she's touched each of us in different ways. Yeah. But I think when I really sat with it and knowing that you were coming, I think one of the many gifts that she has is really reminding us of relationships. Mm -hmm. And when I speak to relationships, what she teaches us in that course is relationship with ourself mm -hmm. and coming back home, relationship with the land. I mean, I have chills. Relationship with the plants. And from there then stems everything else, yeah. right? Yeah. And I think that that is... That's really the, for me, there's so many things about the course that are nuggets of gold yeah. that, you know, I always say to students, um, you know, don't rush through it, yeah. but don't take forever and not finish it because we don't offer lifetime access on purpose. I was going to ask you that. How long after that someone purchases? So it's they... three years. Oh, that we, so, so lifetime yeah. access yeah. for the print product. Okay. So you get the binder forever. Yeah. So whether you submit your homework or not. Right. But we used to have lifetime access. And what we found is that students weren't completing the, we all need deadlines. <laughs> they need a deadline, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so we really grappled with that and yeah. we came up with three years because that, in, that allows life to happen yeah. and to unfold. Right. It allows students to go through it at their own pace. Yeah. And it allows, I believe, the nuggets and the wisdom that she's woven through that course so yeah. magically. Yeah to touch us yeah. if you don't rush through it and you don't miss it. Yeah. Many students rush through it and they want the certificate of completion on their wall and right. that is their journey. And Rosemary reminds us that all the time. Yeah. If a student is coming to us, our job is to not make them more stressful. Mm -hmm. Our job is to hold them in our role in the school, is to hold them in where they are in that moment. Mm. So uh, that's what I wanted to add. I guess I'll add one more question. Is is when you graduate from the course, is that when you get the moon necklace? It is not. So, okay. um, it, you, right. I kind of always thought that was the case. But yeah. <laughs> so when you graduate from the course, you receive the certificate of completion of the science and art of herbalism, okay. Rosemary Gladstar's course. Yeah. Um, she was giving the moon necklaces out at Sage Mountain when you completed uh, her apprentice program. Gotcha. Okay. So yes. when I see that at herb conferences, it's people that have taken apprenticeships. And now the lineage. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, that makes so sense. it's now so beautifully yeah. moved on to teachers who studied with Rosemary and that. who had her as their, te you know, honoring yeah. her. And now they give it to their students. That's super cool. And so we've been sitting with, so the gentleman who makes these beautiful moon necklaces mm -hmm. is um, on the, he should, he's been saying he will retire mm -hmm. for many years. So he's not able to make as many and they're not available as much and so we are going to um, we have some ideas hmm. so we do want to continue the tradition for me many people it reminds me where I come from mm -hmm. and where home is yeah. and my ancestors yeah. and the plants mm -hmm. and how to walk in the world every day does and it have I, a name the necklace no no oh, okay mm -hmm. I just always love seeing them it yeah and happy. I think I think people have different um, you know, it reminds me of Rosemary. Yeah. It reminds, sorry if I was tapping the <laughs> mic. Did y'all hear that? <laughs> I just noticed this one. <laughs> um, that was your heartbeat. Yes, yeah. yeah. Thank you for that. <laughs> so, you know, it reminds me of, of um, all of those gifts yeah. that I've been given or have received. And uh, really, every step 
walking and reminding and remembering. All right, so we've gushed quite a bit about rosemary, which yeah. of course, why not? But um, I actually, I keep bringing it back to the science and art of herbalism.com. <laughs> um, but I, I, would, I don't know where that came from. But um, I would actually, I would love to hear about some of the guest instructors mm -hmm. uh, that are inside of the, the course. So can you name a few or? I feel it's a gift for our students to experience many different teachers and teaching styles. And that's Rosemary's really one of her missions as we know. And I'll get into that a little more. But the guest teacher section, we have um, mini classes from David Winston, Tammy Sweet, Guido Masse. Uh, Caroline Gagnon from Canada. Uh, there are so many others that I apologize that I'm not mentioning in this moment to um, some of our course teachers. Laura Kroll um, has done a beautiful offering on Student Materia Medica. We love to, Laura Kroll. We, we love her. <laughs> um, it, to also some of the students from Sage Mountain. So we have a, a basically it's an offering from those that some of you may know you know, some of those teachers that we all regard with our hearts and have gratitude for their teachings, um, no matter if they're known nationally, globally, or from the mountain mm. and from our school. Yeah. And I love that. Mm. I love that we have a diverse offering of these teachers. Some of them are a deeper dive. Maya Toll is another one. She oh, does a whole thing nice. on intuition. Yeah. Oh my gosh, yeah. I just went through her mini course on our, awesome. in our online platform and it just reminded me how much I miss her and yeah. love her teachings. She's fantastic. It's a taste, mm. right? She yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, she's so good. She, yeah. so, um, so Rosemary, one of the, the gifts of many is not only does she inspire us to build these relationships with the land, with ourselves, and with the plants, yeah. and learn about the medicinal plants and how to work with them in right relationship, yeah. but she also encourages us to study with many teachers. Mm -hmm. And part of that is, and I, I, she's just brilliant in so many ways, but it's basically, we can learn from so many other people. We can understand the style that works for us, the tone, the, you know, some people are like, I just sat, I was sharing with you with Rosalie mm -hmm. and I would love to have her as a, an offering in our online, you cool. know, as a guest teacher. She is so funny yeah, she's and she's so gifted yeah. And the way that she teaches resonated with me. Everything she shared yeah. just went right in. I was like, I, like I want more. Works. Yes. Yeah. You know, so, but. Rosemary's feeling is that as we learn from all of these teachers, then we learn the different styles, we learn the different experiences that they've had, which then allows us to build our own confidence and experience of knowing who we are and what our belief system is when working with the plants. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just, and going back to collaboration versus competition, yeah. we're lifting yeah. In reciprocity, you know, we're sharing, once you've completed our course as an herbalist, you're a forever student, in mm. my humble opinion. Yeah. We can't learn enough. So then we give a flavor yeah. of, you know, who these teachers are. And maybe once you've done, you know, you've studied with us and you've completed this course, then you'd like to go on yeah. and study. You know, we love Herb Rally. By Yay. the way, Thank I'd you. also <laughs> like to pitch Herb Rally because, and, and, I was going to say it at the end, but if I may, please, um, in the spirit of collaboration versus competition yeah. and in the spirit of us, you know, really one of Rosemary's um, teachings when you first start the course is that every student, and I hope you all do this, we all should be doing this. We all should sign up for two or three herb walks yeah. a year, mm, no matter like how that. established we are, yeah. right? Go to, if we are able to, yeah. affordability, accessibility, yeah. I understand, but if yeah. we are able to go to one or two herbal gatherings, yep. which is where Herb Rally comes in. That's right. Right? Yeah. So when you, I also have been watching, and mm. I, you know, watching you and your journey and knowing you from when you were at Mountain Rose, yep. and then you started the website of a compilation of the, <laughs> of the herbal gatherings, yep. you know. Even herb walks, yep. All I'll of it, and yeah. I was like, right on. Yeah. And we started sharing in our online platform so cool. about you yeah. in the very beginning because <laughs> it was so helpful, and it yeah. was so in alignment with Rosemary's mission yeah. and teachings of, you know, where are these happening? Yeah. Where are they in your backyard or yeah. in your community or in your, you know, even your state, right? And so I want to thank you because mm. I really, I, I've seen your journey from the outside, as yeah. many of us in this day and age of social media and, you know, <laughs> long distance. But um, I am so grateful to you. You saw, 
you had a passion and a vision and you have stuck with it and you have put it together and you do it with such authenticity and heart. And I also think, and you and I touched on it last night a little, we had this around the fire when we had this beautiful moment, but um, in our herbal community, I think in every community, there can be like, um, there can be, what's the word I'm looking for? Dis divisiveness. divisiveness yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And what I see is you're the, you're bridging and, know, yeah. and you are really working at bringing our community together or keeping our community together. And for that, I am also grateful because I think what you're offering our community is really badass. Thank you. <laughs> I just want to say that. I appreciate that. And you that. too, Amanda, behind the camera. So beautiful over there. Amanda's <laughs> doing amazing stuff. I mean, she's totally beautified. What I, if you could have, I mean, you could probably go back in the Wayback Machine online and see what the website used to look like. It was ugly, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's uh, Amanda's doing so much for Herb Rally as well. And, but yes, to this day, I mean, like you were mentioning the, the herbal conferences and the herbalism events and the plant walks and all that mm -hmm. stuff that we list. I do it manually to this day, the same way. And I, there's probably got to be an automated way to do it, but um, it is actually kind of helpful for me to do it one at a time to uh -huh. add them because then I'm, I am learning like who's doing what and, and all that. So maybe down the future, there'll be a technological way that I could like help Have it speed fed up the, in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in the meantime, yeah, to this day, since 2015, we've been listening to those herbalism events and it's, it's really the crux of what Herb Rally is all about is to, yes, promote all of the different herbalists and all of the different mm -hmm. regions doing all the incredible work. So um, thank you very yeah, much for welcome. the flowers. I and I would that. like to say, yeah. so, um, cause it's a story that needs to be shared mm -hmm. is right before this started for all of you who are listening. Yeah. Um, we walked out and I was taking pictures of the two of you <laughs> and we were under this beautiful, like just this forest canopy with this big tree and all of a sudden this hummingbird flew in and I have cool. never seen anything like it. This hummingbird right for the two of you did this, this zoom five times, yep. six, Sounds how many right. times? Yeah, like zzz, zzz, zzz. yeah, maybe yeah. five or six times. It was, yeah. And it was like the most magical <laughs> thing. Anyway, was, I think that that was such yeah, a sign of like really the neat. joy and the love that the two of you carry with you and carry in the work that you do. Thank you. I just wanted to. Yeah. I've said it before and I'll say it again. I do feel like Herb Rally in a lot of ways is Amanda and I's personal gifts that we just kind of upload to the internet and share with the rest mm -hmm. of the world. And well, you can see it. It's a fun balance. So thank mm -hmm. you for recognizing that. Enough about me. How about you? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank you, Helen. You're that welcome. really means a lot to me. Um, I did want to say before I forget, let's, um, is there a um, guest instructor uh, page on your website that we could link to in the podcast show notes where it can kind of show all that? Or maybe we'll just link to the main website and people could just peruse. Yeah. And then okay. if, if people like, we have so much information on our sales page. Okay. Great. You know, so it's Sweet. really the course outline page. Yeah. I hate calling it the sales page. Yeah. Um, yeah, I feel you. Yeah. Right. Kind of so, sound. but on the website, yeah. people can explore and learn about. Um, and one of the things that I love to do yeah. is answer questions if anybody has it. Cool. So interested students yeah. all land with me. Okay. And I'm able to, um, to not only share what we offer, but if it doesn't feel in alignment, yeah. then I share other herbalists okay. that I think they can study with. Did you want to drop your email or just get a hold of you on the contact form. Yeah. All right, contact. All right, we'll leave that in the <laughs> I podcast I think that would be, right. yeah, thank you. That'll streamline it Herbs sure. at rosemarygladstar.com. Okay, there you go. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, sweet. Um, let's transition a little bit. Let's uh, let's talk about some plants or a plant. Uh, I'd love to hear, as we kind of wrap up and, you know, let the audience get out of here. And this has been wonderful, by the way. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. This has been awesome. Likewise. Um, let's, let's hear about maybe one of your personal plant allies that you've been leaning on. Oh, well, there's so many, yeah. as we know, but I think the two that come to mind for me that have been with me for, since I moved to Vermont, I would mm -hmm. say, are elder and dandelion. Okay. So elder has been a plant ally of mine since I moved here and we planted this medicinal farm. Um, I love working with that plant and I love her gifts of immune system mm -hmm. and I recently have just returned from a plant initiation with Elder from Pamp Montgomery's property in Southern Vermont. And it blew me away. I'm still in that ceremony for six more weeks. Um, it was three days of 
uh, that one plant and sitting in ceremony with Elder. We fasted and meditated and journeyed and for me, in those moments, there were some really profound moments. One is, I know in my heart that I have gratitude for that plant and, and her gifts every day, and yet I feel like I, I was not honoring her in the way that I should. Mm. And so that, for that, I, I have shifted. Yeah. Um, I think that when we work with medicine and making herbal products, which I shared with you, I kind of lost my way a little. I think we all can. Happens. at certain points, yeah. right? And it was not a moment that I'm proud of, but I'm grateful that I was able to see it. I paused my community herbalism business. So I was making elderberry products and um, offering them in the community, both as gifts and selling it. And when I really sat with it, I felt like I was not in right relationship anymore. Yeah. And so I took a pause and then a dear friend, well, a now dear friend, um, someone that Rosemary has been really encouraging, her name is Beth Ebbing. She's from Dripping Springs, Texas, and has a store, Sacred Moon Herbs. Called me or emailed or texted, I forget, um, maybe six months ago and said, let's do this together. I'll fly out. And I had, at that moment, I was busy. Life happens, you know, I was at my desk and I thought, I didn't even look. Yeah. I just had a moment and said yes. And we signed up and we have just returned. And what I am sitting with so with such a grateful heart is Elder has helped me remember community. Yeah. When you look at that plant and you see how she grows, she lives in community. Not only as a single plant in the way she comes up with all of her stems and the way that she grows um, to the umbral and the berries and how the flowers and you know that the the way that they're in community with each other the way she holds her community in where she grows and lives to each of us in our own community I feel like she has reminded me of my people I also know that she obviously helps with immune support and um, this past weekend, what she really taught me was that she's also helped me walk with my grief. Mm. And that was a shock for me. Um, she held me through, so my mother committed suicide when I was five. And when a few years ago, I was sitting on Rosemary's porch and I have, like many of us, wrapped that up. Mm. I put a big bow on it and I stuffed it deep inside of me. And I was not willing or wanting. I carried the grief. I carried the responsibility on myself. I thought I was the reason. I was five. I, my sister was sev seven years older than I was. I felt like I was a mistake yeah. my whole life. I mean, all of these things that I can speak to now because I've spent the last two years unpacking it. I've gone to therapists. I've gone to healers. I've gone to energy weavers who have helped me understand the fear that I hold and how it moves me in the world and how I don't want to hold that in my cells anymore. I've done past life regression, if you believe in that or not. And I do. I believe that I've been journeying with my mom for many years. And one of the things in the last six months that really came to me and why I'm not crying in this moment is because I just cried for <laughs> three days, <laughs> truly, um, and processed it is that I... I know I wasn't mothered by my mother, and I know that, I, that she wasn't able to. It wasn't hers to be able to give me, and I'm so grateful for her that she gave me this life in this moment, and I'm grateful for the gifts that I've learned, and in ceremony, I looked at Pam, so Rosemary in the front end mm. shared with me to unpack the box, and I remember leaving the porch that day saying, no way in hell. <laughs> I'm going to unpack that box. Right. <laughs> and Scary. as Rosemary can be magical, it kept tapping me yeah. and tapping me. And I thought, oh, darn. Yeah. And I have to do the work. Yeah. And I did. And this past weekend, I looked at Pam and I said, and the, and the beautiful group of, of people that were there in circle and in ceremony that I'm so grateful for. Mm. And in a joking way, because that's how I deal with my emotions sometimes, as I am right now. Right, right. <laughs> um, I said, when is enough enough? Right. Like, when have we unpacked it and when have mm. we hurt and suffered and 
cried and looked at it from all different angles, like, when is enough? And Elder and Pam shared with me in that moment, it was my choice. Yeah. I, am, I have my own agency, and that's what Elder also gives us, is, is in those moments she provided that strength, and somebody said in that circle, we can bend, but we will, will not break. Mm. And it was like, that was the gift of how to process my grief and how to hold my grief and how to also then know that I wouldn't break and then how to know that I'm resilient and resistant and um, where dandelion comes in, mm. right? With her yeah. deep root in that, I mean, we can cut her down over and over again and she just amazes me that she keeps coming up yeah. in that bright, sunny way. And so I walk with both of them and I think that... Um, I never looked at elder as a plant that would help me through my grief. Yeah. You know, and I think that's the wonder of plants and our relationship with them as we walk this walk and we really do the dive and we understand and know the gifts that we share in reciprocity. And I know that I will walk a different walk with her now. I know that I will have more gratitude and I know that when I make her medicine, I will be more intentional. Mm. I started that way and I think that I be it became a chore. Yeah. You know, it became a, um, and for that, I'm grateful that I was able to have that pause and have that reset. And I am so grateful to be uh, having that time of ceremony and initiation that Pam holds that sacred space for us of sitting with just one plant. Yeah. That's powerful. So, and then the last thing I'll say is dandelion also I think both of them, honestly, and there's many plants, so I don't mean to just single them out, as we know. <laughs> there are so many plants, yeah. trees, and... Um, you got nettles back there? I do. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other story that, that <laughs> happened this that. week, I know. <laughs> but Dandelion, you know, when I sit with her, she is about hope yeah. and resilience and resistance, and I mm -hmm. think we need all those right now yeah. in our human race, yeah. and I, I pray for that. Yeah. I'm so glad you had that experience with Elder. Me like, too. What a powerful story that you were able to share with everybody. And I hope they take inspiration from it that, you know, no matter what you're experiencing, um, I'm, and I'm glad that Rosemary was able to, like, push <laughs> yeah. you towards that because sometimes you just need a little nudge or a few mm -hmm. nudges. And uh, just kind of as, like, um, a takeaway for the audience, if, say, they're de dealing with some sort of grief or issue, um, do you actually recommend they go sit with Elder for... A bit of time, maybe try to find a different plant ally uh, to work through that or? I would. I mean, I think that through my journey, I will say that, and I've always said this, no matter where we are and what we're dealing with in our life, build a team. Mm. I really cannot emphasize that enough that yeah. in our, in this moment, and your team can be whatever it is that you need and want, yeah. you know, but I think that mental health and um, therapists, if you will, mental yeah. health therapists, there's a stigma that is absolutely not appropriate. Yeah. We go to the gym, yeah. we walk in nature to be fit and yeah. healthy, we eat good food. Yeah. Why would we not have somebody to support us in good mental health? Yeah. In whatever way that looks like for you, right? So it can be a healer, it can be a best friend, it can be a sister or a brother, um, it can be a, a mental health therapist. Yeah. And for me in that moment, it was so deep and dark and I'd been holding it for so long that I needed professionals. Yeah. You know, I also needed my husband and my boys and my herbal sisters yeah. and community, you know, yeah. uh, and the plants yeah. to wrap me in, yeah. right? Um, and to be able to feel safe yeah. when I'm feeling vulnerable in those moments. So I think what I would offer is build your team. Mm. I think that that's for me in any situation that we're in, if it's health crisis, if it's an emotional crisis, if it's Walking in the woods. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I, Back to community. Yeah, and the, a therapist could be part of your community. And I yep. pushed that off for many years. My dad kept being like, you need to go to a therapist. <laughs> and, uh, and I was like, no, Dad, I, I'll just talk to you about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And uh, I finally gave in, and uh, I started seeing a therapist for many years. And it was so beneficial. Mm -hmm. So if you're struggling with any sort of mental illness and uh, you have some sort of taboo against Seeing a therapist, I highly recommend you at least give it a shot. Me and too. By the way, don't don't just go with the first therapist if if it's not if you're not mm -hmm. vibing with that. There's no shame in just saying like this isn't a good fit. 
move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. So do you agree with that? I do. Yeah. I've had many that I've sat in a room with and thought, you're not my person. Right. For whatever reason, shape or form, yeah. you know? And so I think that, yeah. um, I think that it's really important to find the people that support you. Yeah. And if you can't keep looking, because I can't agree with you more. Yeah. And my prayer is that we can all sit in a place and a time how you and I are right now with yeah. no shame and yeah. no guilt. And we can say my therapist, yeah. Right? Oh, yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> and a therapist can be hugging a tree. Right, well, absolutely. Right? There's all sorts but, of But I think types, there uh, are times and places where, you know, I have um, I've built a team where, you know, there's a woman in Montpelier who I would like to honor and, mm. and thank, Jan Sandman. Mm. And she has been working with me, and she is she does a combination of talk therapy and Traeger body work, sound bowls, energy healing. Yeah. And the combination of those for me is, I mean, I walk out of there a new person. Every mm. time I see her, she gives me the gifts and she shares light and helps me look in the dark places mm. and I feel safe. And I can only encourage all of us to find and build that team. You know, and I also think a part of the team is a naturopath or herbalist yeah. or clinical herbalist, whatever your belief system is, and a medical doctor, yeah. right? Totally. And, and somebody that will work with each other, yeah. so. That's very important. Yeah, thank you for sharing too. Absolutely. Yeah. So let's wrap up here, and um, I, I was really excited to ask you this question as I was like kind of thinking about what do I want to talk to Helen about? And you know, we've already talked about Rosemary a fair bit, but I think this would be really valuable, and I, I bet you have a great answer to this, but um, is there something that Rosemary has taught you, uh, some sort of life lesson or something that you implement in your daily life? Oh, <laughs> so. I knew it. <laughs> I know. There are so many. Yeah. Um, I, I can't reiterate enough how honored and privileged and blessed I feel every day yeah. to, and the gifts that she shares. So to name a couple, and then sure. I'm going to talk about the one that for me in this moment, mm. Joy. Yeah. She reminds us every day to see the gifts that are provided in front of us. Mm. And as we were walking through the fireflies last night mm. in this magical moment, you know, that was, it, it came up for me of like, if we can all pause and see the beauty, it will feed us. Yeah. And it is reciprocal yeah. because then the plant that we're loving on feels that energy. <clears throat> That's one of her gifts. She is one of the most gracious people I know. She's generous from the depths of her heart and she shares it with everybody she walks with, that she comes in contact with it from conferences to students to sisters, you know, and then we've already spoken, but she holds her relationship so dearly. Mm -hmm. So, but in this moment for me, one of the gifts that she's really given me is how she has no judgment for people. Mm. And I think that in this moment, I, I try to walk in a place where I don't judge. Yeah. But what I've noticed, for whatever reason, things bubble up in our lives mm. and we can, mm -hmm. right? And I have witnessed in the last month numerous moments where Others have been, and myself to an extent, have been um, judging yeah. in a community or in a gathering and where she caught herself mm -hmm. and said to me, honey, come on, let's go, and invited that person or people to sit with us wow. and form her That's own nice. judgment yeah. of who that was, you know, really sit with um what were their struggles in that moment and why may they be showing up in the way that they were showing up. Yeah. And that is such a teaching for me in the, where we are as a, just in this moment and how we can judge people. And I think social media doesn't help. I think that what I would say to you, I hope this is not me, yeah. but what people might say to yeah. somebody in person versus saying online totally. is completely different. Yeah. And that's a whole nother topic. Yeah. But what I would offer for me in this moment is that she gives me so many gifts, but right now the one that I'm sitting with is how she really carries no judgment for people. Mm. And it, it blows me away that, that her generous spirit and she checks herself in such a lovely way. Yeah. And I'm grateful. So are you saying that there might have been at this particular event or whatever it was that there, there might have been some sort of judgment bubbling in the beneath the surface and then they were like, wait a sec, instead of like... No, she... Just hit it head on and, and was she like... She recognized it people. and she yeah. she realized what yeah. was happening in a moment, you know, like it was... It was yeah. 
this whole community event and, yeah. you know, people can be different yeah. or people can be struggling or whatever it is. And then maybe they make a mistake or they say something that isn't appropriate yeah. or, and we can all have judgments yeah. around that. Yeah. Like, oh, did you see how rude that right, person right. was? Or, oh, that was kind of a wise ass comment yeah. or that was mean, yeah. right? Yeah. But unless we experience it ourselves, yeah then it's easy for us to get on the bandwagon of yeah. like, oh, did you see what that person yeah. did? Yeah. Like, and, and I think that sometimes that energy can circle and build, yeah. right? And yeah. so what I noticed and saw and she named in that moment was, I actually haven't experienced that. Yeah. Yeah. And I recognized that I was on this path and she pulled it right <laughs> back and said, let's invite him to sit. You know, it, it was like the most beautiful yeah. I love that. reminder for me of, of really checking ourselves seems to be kind of the way she has wired her brain uh, and her soul because she's emphasized when i interviewed her it's a practice so mm -hmm. practice these things and she also talked about cooperation versus competition as feeling like sure I'm, I'm not immune to not feeling jealousy when other people do things but then she's wired herself or practiced instead of feeling jealousy reaching out to that person and then like trying to develop a, a relationship so i yeah i want to emphasize that mm -hmm practice these things like it seems so difficult but I think the more you do them the more you get better at it and that's probably why she's pretty good at it at and this we're point. <laughs> and we're all human yeah, exactly. so we all can falter yeah and I think that's the thing that I love about her is yeah. that she she can have those moments where she pauses she recognizes it she names it and she tells everybody else about it too yes. so she doesn't s appear to be like this saint or something no like that. Yeah. she's so she's, authentic yeah, in that way that. and I really yeah. appreciate that yeah you know with all of the other right. gifts <laughs> so one yeah. thing that I will say is yeah. you know I've been through a lot of transitions since I've known her mm -hmm. and um and I've thought of this moment many times as we've been sitting here together. Mm -hmm. But I always have this image of her. She's this long, beautiful hair. Yeah. You know, she has this giggle that just <laughs> the, the laughter that she brings is just joyful mm -hmm. to the depths of my soul. And I think many. Right. So I have this image of her holding my hand and we're skipping and running <laughs> and laughing. And then all of a sudden you reach the cliff yeah. of like in my mind, it's like the Grand Canyon. Mm. And she just shoves you. <laughs> no right? back. she empowers us yeah. she inspires us yeah. she pushes us about you know among and i say to all of our students and then you fly yeah. you know yeah. and that that is it's a gift yeah. yeah and we are i i feel like every single one of us that has been touched by her or who has had the grace to walk with her whether it's through her books or through her course or through uh, a conference yeah. a friend Whatever it is, she is a treasure. Well, we're excited to hang out with her later yes. today. And, and also, later on on our trip, we're going to visit Sage Mountain. And I, obviously, she's been a couple mm -hmm. decades there uh, growing. You'll love it. Yeah, so yeah. excited to check that out. But um, any final thoughts before we wrap up and get out of here? So I have one more pitch for right. Herb Rally. Oh, go on. I really, <laughs> I, I can't say enough. I know yeah. I already spoke about um, the container that you hold and the information that you share, yeah. but I really would like to share with all of you. Um, I speak and work with a lot of students and I am on social media like many of us, so I'm not, I don't mean to, but like the work that you do and the container you hold and having met you both and the heart and authenticity and fun, mm. you're fun and you're in love. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. The love that's flowing. That hummingbird did it today yeah. for you both. <laughs> um, cool. I can't, I cannot yeah. recommend it enough for anybody. I know you're all listening to yeah. your, you know, to this show right now, but yeah. um, check out the membership. And, and for me, I'm really grateful. Herbalite.com slash schoolhouse. Use coupon code YouTube 30 at checkout to get your first 30 days for free. That. <laughs> yes. Do it. Since Do you it mentioned now. It, I mean, come on. <laughs> Did I announce yeah. it? Could you hear me? Or, okay. <laughs> Thank um, you, Helen. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome. And I'd also like to honor Amanda. Respect. Really, um, you're behind the scenes yeah. and not many people see you, but you are amazing. You're beautiful, you're stunning, your yeah. spirit, your gentleness, <laughs> you're, you're funny as all get out. <laughs> I wish you could yeah. all see the faces. Yeah. So anyway, thank you both. It's really been an honor and a privilege to be with you. Thank you. Yeah, the hospitality you, Peter and Chris, have shown us, like this yeah. has been so cool. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, like, yeah, what a beautiful land and... Um, what a fun trip. So yeah. thank you for the invite and letting us stay with y'all and hang out with the fireflies and, and all that. So, um, so 
science and art of, of herbalism. herbalism.com. Uh, and we were talking about the accessibility. Um, one thing I did want to mention, maybe I shouldn't say this, but sometimes I want to say maybe once a year or twice a year you guys host a sale. We do. So even then, if you want to make it even more accessible, stay tuned. Get on their email newsletter list to find out all the amazing happenings. Also, should probably plug uh, uh, Voices of Our Herbal Elders, host yes. Rosemary Gladstar. Um, amazing podcast, all sorts of our herbal elder guests, which apparently she might be starting another series with other herbalists as well. Well, we have a long uh, list yeah, of elders yeah, right. that we're going through, yeah, let's, but let's that's get our through dream. Those. Yeah, yes, exactly. Totally. But, um, and if you have questions, yeah. herbs at rosemarygladstar.com. Yeah. All right, cool. So, and we will get back to you. Um, if you're interested in the course, or as I was saying with Mason earlier, one of my favorite things to do is speak to students on their journey wherever you are yeah. and um, share about our offering and others because yeah. our course isn't for everybody. Yeah. Um, so. But it kind of is. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Helen Ward, thank yeah. you so much. Thank um, you. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Thanks to Amanda for video, videoing and editing, all the above. And uh, we'll see you in the next episode of the Herbalist Hour. Yeah, thank you, Bye. everyone. Bye. Good job. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much for watching today's episode of the Herbalist Hour. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more great herbal content, be sure to subscribe to our Herb Rally YouTube channel. Uh, if you enjoy these Herbalist Hour episodes and you'd like to join us live, uh, you can do so by becoming an Herb Rally Schoolhouse member. Uh, learn more at herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. And if you want to get your first 30 days for free, use coupon code YouTube30 at checkout. So our Herb Rally Schoolhouse members get access to exclusive video classes, monographs, and a lot more more herbal community discounts, um, along with joining these live Herbalist Hour interviews. So one more time, herbrally.com slash schoolhouse. Enter coupon code YouTube30 at checkout to get your first 30 days for free. All right, we'll see you in the next episode and take care.